This is sort of a continuation of my two other videos where I put up a deer fence around most of my property. We still have this big opening at the driveway and the deer are still getting in. So the plan is to build this eight foot tall by 54 foot wide gate across my driveway. It's sort of in a modern style where the uh, vertical sections are going to be made out of steel and the horizontal body of it that you see here is uh, going to be a Brazilian hardwood. So with anything big and expensive or small and expensive or whatever, it's better to model it up. So this is in Fusion 360. I've got, uh, you can see I turn off the canvas, uh, sort of half-assed modeled it, but did this in order to get the kind of the proportions figured out with my, these are four, four inch deep by 10 inch wide steel posts. I wanted to get the proportions right so that it didn't look too small with the height. Uh, basically if I would have had like a four inch wide post or four by four post or a six by six post going in here, it probably would have looked pretty thin based on just how tall it is. You, you don't really get a good feel of scale here. But I did go through, and you can you can take a picture and use it as a canvas in Fusion 360. So this is basically an overlay of what we're going to end up with, hopefully. So we're going to go out, and I've got the steel ready to go, and we'll get this thing started. So here's our steel we're going to be using. Well, part of our steel that we're going to be using for this project. Uh, these are the 4x10, 3 16 inch wall posts that will be running vertically on there. I, the wider profile will be showing towards the driveway or towards the road. It sits back far enough that I think the the being thinner, that four inch uh, depth wise, shouldn't make it look strange. But I wanted because it's eight feet tall, having that extra width just to kind of give it some give it some bulk to the post. Because you normally, I thought it'd be weird if you know if I did it in a in like a concrete column, you know, like a concrete block, and then faced it out and did all that. It would be that big or bigger, but it would be kind of weird because it's going to be nine feet above the ground or whatever by the time you clear the clear the fence. So, I went with the four by ten. They're expensive, but it wasn't as ex you know. If I went ten by ten or twelve by twelve or whatever, it would have been just crazy expensive. Plus these at I think they're seventeen pounds a foot, so it's like three hundred and forty pounds for even just the short ones. I got two two twenties and a twenty four. That's strictly just because they, with the hurricanes and stuff, I guess they're having trouble with semis getting getting stuff moved around. So that was all they could find um, in a somewhat reasonable time frame was to get uh, get two twenties and a twenty four. So that's fine. I'll either make make all of them tens and have an extra section for if I need to do something, or if I decide to put on the back side on the top maybe a cap to make it look wider from the front. If I uh, decide that looks strange. I'll, I'll have that section or for another project or whatever. And then I've got 16 gauge, three by three. These are 24 foot pieces that are gonna be for basically along the top, top and bottom where the where the wood is. And then all the, the cantilevered gate will be made out of that three by three section. So the the wood will sit inside of the face of that three by three, my, my horizontal boards of uh, what looks like Camaru is currently the currently my selection for that. So we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff cut up. Since these are since these are 20 foot pieces, I need to be nine feet uh, up from the ground at least. I'm gonna basically have to weld a frame on the bottom of it because you can't get enough in the ground for it to for it to hold up even just the the weight of its own post, let alone the fence and the gate and everything. So the idea is I'm gonna cut these and then I'm gonna weld a, just a rebar frame down and then that'll set into the concrete and keep it open that'll also make it nice because i'll have i'll be able underground to get to the inside because i want to do something with like a leds on the either the front or the, well probably the front and the back but maybe like on the face of it instead of like a light on the top you would conventionally see i'm going to have on the on the on the on this profile have maybe like a rectangle that has like a light behind it that then shines out around the sides for kind of a neat look. Just on those inner two, I think, right closest to the driveway. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut up. These are heavy, like I said, so we're gonna lift them with the tractor and cut them on the bandsaw. So this is the easiest way I could figure out how to do this. I've got my, this is a seven by 12 capacity bandsaw display model because it was missing the cover from Northern Tool. And uh, I've got a couple of these aluminum Warner benches at the end, either end to catch it. And the tractor forks are on either side of the saw holding, holding it up. That's how I set it in there. Uh, so just drive in, set it down, and then that'll support this side as it drops off the saw. Now that I've got the three 10 foot sections cut, what we need to do is add a structure of the bottom to go into the concrete. These are cut at 10 feet. Uh, I'm going to, I modified my design a little bit. So I'm gonna leave six inches at the top and then I'm gonna have an eight foot section of between, I'm gonna, my eight foot is gonna be the outside of where the three inch square tubes are gonna go across out of here and then the body of that will be filled in with wood and then I'm going to leave three more inches so eight foot six here and then three more inches between the bottom uh, bottom three inch square tube and the ground so eight foot eight foot uh, eight foot nine inches leaves me just this section to put into the ground these are what are they 150 160 70 pounds um, between that and the weight of everything else, I'm putting these, anchoring them into the ground is, this certainly isn't enough. So uh, I'm gonna build a rebar structure onto the end and probably go out so that we can have a four foot deep hole and then fill that with concrete. So we're gonna come off the end here with rebar and build kind of a structure and weld it in to these. That'll be the next step. I've got these first two pretty much completed here. Uh, what I ended up doing instead of just getting some scrap pieces is I took that extra four feet I had on that longer one and just cut these half to three quarter inch sections which worked out real slick to, to just make these extensions. So I slipped on those and then welded it all together. I've got these primed, getting ready to dig the holes and put these first two in the ground so we can put a string all the way across. They're really heavy so we're going to have to try to play around and, and figure out the best way to get them plumb and, and the right height since I don't want to have to recut them once I get them in the hole. It was raining when I put these first few in so I didn't record any of that but this just is to give you an overview of how it kind of worked out getting these in. I was originally trying to set them all at a specific height. There's no way I was going to be able to get that done. These things are 175 to 200 pounds a piece so once you get them in the hole they're in the hole. I've lifted them with a chain to try to change the angle and get them to line up and everything perfectly but you don't want to pull them in and out of the hole they're just way too big so got my holes dug dig them by hand because it's a rectangular hole but this is kind of the setup I came up with where I'm I take a dead blow and move the fork side to side to get that and then set the angle and 
and where it is in the hole to get everything level and hold it uh, with this little board and some clamps so that works out pretty well and then uh, not using the concrete mixer just dumping bags in the hole and uh, and letting it set up so we've got the outside one there and the other two on the other side so we've got two more to dig that hole like had a big rock in the bottom that I had to take out with a hammer drill but we're getting there we get these other ones in and we'll do an update with putting in the cross pieces so we've reached the next stage I've got uh, my posts all in I think I said in the first last one that I just put concrete I did mix water in it as I dumped them in and everything so the concrete is set up these are held in here now so I got three in on this side and then I got my three in on this side I did have to do some grade work now we're working on setting the bottom level of the outside frame of our fence so I've dug that down to grade I shot it with the laser and then uh, kind of checked it with a string line to make sure that as I come across this driveway the gates gonna clear because the gate will be at the same level as that bottom as that bottom rung so this one right here is welded in just to give you an idea of what we're doing here so we'll have one there at the bottom and then one at the top and then we'll have horizontal boards filling that in I'm gonna have to weld in. I'll weld in strips on the side to screw those boards into so what we're doing right now is we've got the welder strapped into the loader bucket I had to make a little this welder will run on on 110 it's one of those multi voltage ones but off the generator the generator wasn't coming up to voltage or coming yeah, I guess maintaining voltage enough to uh, to keep it to where you could weld nice with it so I made this little cord to hook up to the, the twist lock 230 plug on this this is a 7,000 watt generator I did try to run it off just for just for giggles to see what would happen I I set it on its lowest setting and, and put it on the 110 plug and hooked it up to my little Honda uh, briefcase generator and it did a uh, nice job of outputting mildly warm wire into a little pile of spaghetti but it sure wouldn't weld so it works works fine on the 7000 watt and now I've got to get this one set I'm gonna check it with the laser and make sure that we're we're at the same point on both sides and then this will this will be our our baseline then we can just measure off of this for all the all the rest of the stuff we do but using the laser I'll be able to make sure that I'm even all the way across so when the gate is closed everything lines up because the idea is that it'll have one consistent bottom and top rail and all the boards will line up as it as it closes
So we're skipping forward here. I worked on this a few days with my dad and my brother. We were here over Thanksgiving, and it's kind of weird filming with other people here. So I uh, want to go over what I've got done, and this will just kind of sum up, and then this will be the end of this part, and then we'll, we'll go on to the next section in another video. But we got all the, all the top rails in. Uh, one of the next steps, I need to cut all these even across the top. I'm just going to use a big cutoff wheel. And, and, uh, and the laser and just shoot those and mark them and cut all six of these posts to the same. I built this, one of the harder parts was I built this door that is framed in here. The idea is that it'll be completely flush on the outside. You won't know that it's there. You'll be, it'll have a lock on the back so I can lock it if I want. But essentially I'll just walk up to it and push on it. I'm gonna put a gas strut up here at the top so that'll keep it closed. But I've got it, as you can see, I've, I've also taken some just cheap wood and we played with the spacing uh, between the boards here and, you know, worked it with either, I think it was the difference between 14 and 15 boards vertically. That stuff's so expensive, I don't want to cut it. It's also hard to cut, so I don't want to cut it. So trying to use 14 or 15 whole boards spaced out over our 90 inches that's between that top rail and this bottom rail. So currently this is the tighter spacing. I believe that there is, I want to say it's five eighths of an inch. Might be wrong. I think it was five eighths, but not whatever 90 inches divided by six is minus five and a half inches. I think that, I think the actual deck boards are a little bit, or the actual boards I'm buying are a little bit under the five and a half that you normally account for on these pine boards, but whatever that works out to is what that number is. So I like this tighter spacing, but it was a pain to get this gate, you know, squared up in the hole, you know, we're dealing with the big heavy thing, but I've got this all welded up. The top bar is welded in because that gives it gives it some more structure the bottom moves with the gate so essentially it looks exactly the same on the outside there's no way to tell from the outside that this is a gate if i take this magnet it may yeah i've only i only had enough clamps to clamp all these on one side so uh i don't have them clamped on that side so if i open them it's all going to fall apart so i don't want to do that right now see that in another video but again the idea is just that you'll be able to push it and the get it'll just push and then the gas strut will close it and it'll have some kind of stop so it doesn't move forward but from the outside it'll be completely hidden because there's no fasteners no handles no latch on the outside and I just built this with it's a inch and a half I think this is inch and a half by two inch tubing and then I had these big weld on hinges. They've got a grease fitting on them. So I use those as my, as my hinges and then just dug this back with a backhoe a little bit so you've got enough room to, to open and close that. So I'm, I'm real happy with the way that turned out. I've got to weld some caps on the end of this, of my three inch bottom that matches my three inch bottom that I have all the way across and, uh, and we'll be good to go there. So I think that's gonna wrap it up for what we're gonna cover in this video. Next, uh, I'm gonna go through on the, I need to drill, now I've got my spacing set, I need to make my vertical supports. I'm gonna use a one inch C channel behind the, the larger open sections on either side. And I probably will put one in the middle here and in the middle of the, the other uh, five foot space on the other side just to give it a little extra support. I really think it'll be fine, but uh, might as well do it now. And instead of doing, before I talked about it, I was going to cut off of a sheet of eighth inch that I have, cut those, cut a, cut a strip off the end and weld it to the post as my, as my place to screw in here at the end. I decided what I'm going to do is I've got some inch and a half angle, inch and a half, I think it's eighth inch thick angle that I'm going to weld on there and just use that because that'll keep it square. I won't have to worry about getting that all lined up and not having it warp when I weld it and everything. So I think that's gonna turn out a lot better, but I need to pre-drill all those holes. So I'm gonna put, since I'm only drilling through into the back side of these boards, I'm gonna put three screws in each. So three screws in each going all the way down, accounting for this spacing. 
I'm just going to drill them on the mill. I think that's uh, going to be the best way to go. I'll load them all in the Tormach. I've already got an idea of how I'm going to, how I'm going to clamp that up to run at least three, maybe six of them all at a time so I can run, you know, drill a whole bunch of holes real accurately, fairly quickly. So in the next video, I'll drill all those. I'll drill the C-channel supports. We're going to use the same spacing there, obviously. And then I need to turn the, for the, for, Basically on the other side, it's the same as this side, but where my wheels are gonna mount, I'm gonna have a rod that comes through that's welded into the post. And then that's where the, that's where my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mill a wheel on the, on the lathe so that it will, that will support the gate and that's what it'll roll on. But before I paint all the, clean all these up and paint them, which I kind of need to get to so it doesn't get too cold to do that, the, the, those shafts need to be in. So I'm gonna weld those shafts in. I gotta, I gotta machine the end so it'll have a shoulder and then a threaded end so I can basically put a wheel and some bearings and everything on there once that's done. And the way I'm gonna adjust it, normally on, on the way these cantilever gates work, you'll have adjustment in your wheels so that you can compensate for how the gate operates. I'm gonna take a little bit of a gamble and weld those shafts directly to the post so there'll be no adjustment up or down for them. The way I'm going to adjust is I'm going to cut the wheels a little bit too big, fit it. If it doesn't work, I'm going to put them back on the lathe, turn them down a little bit, put them back on, you know, that kind of thing. So hopefully that's fairly expensive material just because it's a large diameter. Well, not, not that big, but you know, five inches. And hopefully that's going to work out or work in a good enough way. The big thing is going to be getting the, getting the shafts out exactly level, which shouldn't be a big deal. So that everything, you know, you don't have, you know, where the gate comes out at an angle as it comes across or any of that kind of thing. So that's what we'll do in the next video. And then after that, I've got a new, I've got a new paint system that just came, new paint gun system. I was going to maybe use on the sprinter van to paint that trim instead of sending that out but I'm gonna use that to paint this. So we'll do a little demonstration. It's a 3M deal where basically the gun, the ends of the gun change anyway. But we're gonna show that in the next video and that'll wrap this up for now.